it's Thursday night, and that can only mean the sporting world turns here to Zoom, where game day classics and, of course, our conversations with the people from those games. And tonight, uh, one of the most special events in game day history, uh, the play for the cure. Uh, there is nothing better when, than when high school sports can meet up with community uh, activism and the kids and the adults all working together towards a common goal. And this is the cream of that crop. And we have with us tonight uh, our, our grownups. We start with our grownups. And uh, we've got uh, Anne Marie Hool and uh, Liz Sutman and Andy Walker and Teresa Kane. And of course, from the day, Vicki Fulkerson. And guys, first, let me just say thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We'll reminisce a little bit about the game three years ago. And more than that, talk more about uh, you know, what we can do in an ongoing sense as we continue uh, to fight against childhood cancer. But Vicki, uh, it's good to have you. And uh, from your phone, I like, I like that you're uh, <laughs> versatile that way. <laughs> I, I, hey, you guys. Um, I, I guess since we're talking about the play for the cure, the most logical place to start would be um, maybe uh, Anne Marie and Liz could uh, talk a little bit about how they came up with this idea and um, the conversation that got the whole thing started because it's pretty amazing. Like you said, one of the best things that we get to do every year. Um, and Anne Marie, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, I mean, it really starts with Marissa. I mean, that's ultimately how it begins. Um, and, and that has been the common thread, but, uh, you know, prior to it, Liz and I were rivals, um, you know, Stonington versus Waterford. I tried to think of today when that rival start, rivalry started. I don't really remember. I do remember when we beat Waterford for the first time. Um, <laughs> it may be the only time. But, um, you know, and then it was that phone call from Liz to say something, you know, about Marissa being diagnosed. And it was heart-wrenching. And I didn't even know who she was then. Um, but it was the common theme of, of the walkers, you know, losing their brother and, and, and my family losing my sister. And, you know, we kind of just started talking and emailing and it was, it really was as simple as that. Let's do a game. Uh, I don't know if Liz, you want to join in? No, absolutely. And uh, Anne-Marie just kind of took it and ran with it. I really have to give so much of the credit to her. Um, you know, we talked about the idea and she just created such a magnificent um, event for the girls and it just kept growing each and every year. She'd have all these wonderful ideas and her girls would jump on board and they'd get in touch with my softball girls and it's just each year it grew and I'm getting chills about it now just thinking about um, how wonderful it has become and from where it began too. And, and just um, obviously, so people who don't know, Mar Marissa is uh, Liz's and Andy's niece. Um, and she grew up and got to play in the game. Liz, can you t talk about that? Like how, how um, for her to, to, to watch her get to play in that game after everything that she went through, how special that was, that, that's been like a big special part of the whole event. It has, well, she was diagnosed at nine years old. And at the time I wasn't teaching, I was only coaching. And she was home obviously from school going through treatment. And she would come into the locker room and help me decorate the locker room for my girls. And she had her own locker at age nine in the locker room next to all the girls lockers with their names on it. And, you know, she went to those first games and was the ceremonial, you know, person to throw out the first pitch. And then it grew from there with other people from, Camp Rising Sun and other families um, throwing them out. And then when she was a freshman, to think that she came from the nine-year-old with no hair, going through multiple surgeries, um, to a freshman on varsity, on the varsity softball team, one of those girls that she had looked up to, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's incredible to think when she stepped out on that field and came into the game, and in one game she relieved her sister. You know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's an amazing story, a testament to her strength, a testament to the community's strength and support of, of stuff like this. So when, once you started, once you made that phone call, it mm -hmm. never stopped. It's still going strong. Andy and, and you, you kind of took over and it's still special to you, right? Like it's, it mm -hmm. never loses its magic kind of every single year 
It, it, it certainly has taken on a life of its own for sure. And what Anne-Marie and Liz started, um, Anne-Marie, once I was appointed the, the softball coach at Waterford, Anne-Marie reached out to me immediately and said, hey, we got to continue to do this. And I said, absolutely. Um, you know, I was the one looking from beyond the fence at these games and watching Marissa throw out the first pitch and perform and pitch as a freshman. And, um, and to be inside the field and be a part of the whole thing was very special for me. Um, you know, obviously the, 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 the meaning of the game and, and having a brother that did pass at a young age uh, from cancer. And um, it, it really, it, 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 it certainly created a better perspective of what we're doing and, and the importance of this game and the raising of the money and raising awareness. And I think that really filtered down to all the kids that were playing because they, they, they know people that have been touched by cancer. Uh, maybe not a lot of children, but there are some in our community for sure who have uh, raised a great amount of awareness. So just to be a part of it is amazing. And Anne-Marie is phenomenal at organizing and continuing to put this thing on. It gets better and better every year and can only imagine what this year would have been. And one, one more thing I wanted to, before I throw it back to Casey, Ter Teresa, um, uh, Anne-Marie said that last year, you, you've obviously, you played in the game too, right, as a player? And then, yeah. and so to go back and um, as an assistant coach last year, um, Anne Marie said that when the team was all together um, last year, you made a, like a very impassioned speech to them about what it means to to play. And um, can you talk about that? Like, what what did you say to them? What what feelings does this evoke for you? Yeah, I think it's um, when you're in the game, and I think freshman year is when I really realized the true meaning of it. Um, when I was standing on the field and I met Marissa and I talked to uh, her sister and you realize like everybody knows someone like Andy was saying and when you can bring everybody to rival teams which is is pretty unheard of to have such a sense of community um, because you know softball we're, we're really competitive Sewington Waterford two really competitive teams and to be able to come together for something that's so meaningful and has impacted just about everybody. Um, you're playing for something that's much bigger than yourself. And it's usually during the time of the season where players are, can be hard on themselves. You know, if, you, if you're having a bad season or if you have a bad game and to just throw all of that aside and say, your, your one purpose today is to play for kids who can't play or to play for kids and bring awareness to something that's impacting everybody around the world and you're lucky to be able to play because so many kids don't get to because of something that's so far out of their control so I think until you stand on that field and you see how many people you're impacting and uh, the change that you're bringing and awareness that you're raising it's it's a it's a huge moment it's it's invaluable and I think it's so much bigger than any of us um, to bring awareness to something like this. It's so powerful. And I think it's very fitting. Um, obviously we're doing this right now because of, uh, you know, a pandemic that is affecting everyone <laughs> around the world. And, you know, uh, at some point we all, we all hope and pray that we're, we see this uh, in our rear view mirror, but childhood cancer is not going anywhere. And on the other side when we get through this pandemic, which we all will, uh, when we do, this is still gonna be something that is affecting uh, kids around the world all the time. And this game will continue to be uh, very important. And we're gonna head to that game shortly, but I wanted to share uh, the truth about Andy Walker. And uh, in this game three years ago, first of all, Andy actually is at home plate of the field right now. That is not an illusion. <laughs> uh, we went through a lot of effort to get that setup done, but he is there right now. Uh, Andy, I don't think you remember this, but when we came to do the game, uh, it was really nasty. It was not a very nice day. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to the field, and I, had, and I remember thinking to myself, I've never seen a field so nice because the decorations were out. I've never, I'm a baseball guy. We play on cow fields. Like, I had never seen a field pretty. It was beautiful. <laughs> and I went up to you, and you were, like, not focused. You were all over the place. And I just wait, so you're nervous about the game. And you said to me, Case, I got – I got, I'm worried it's going to rain. I'm worried that the, the banner is going to fall down. I got streamers over here. No good. My girls are all freaking out. Like I haven't even thought about the actual <laughs> game yet. And it turned out to be one of our best events on game day. It was a, it was a home run. 
in all of the uh, all of the senses of the word. Uh, so I think it's fitting uh, that we head back and watch some of the beginnings of the uh, the game day classic, Stonington and Waterford, and play for the cure. <laughs> 